Hey, 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 what's going on? It is Kill You With Truths Hangout Live. Look at Wade, first one in, Wade Cotton. Hangout Live, here we are, live from the basement, and um, we're going to hang out here uh, for a while. Usually this goes about an hour or so. It might take you right up to tip off, um, but we will have the Rockies starting soon. So we will have the Rockies and the Phillies. I'm looking at it right now. I have Fubo, and I watch um, all the broadcast on Fubo. We got uh, Drew with Corey Sullivan, and I believe Spilly is in the house too. So Fubo's been great for me uh, today. Uh, did you do a ride? Not today, RJ. I have not done a ride. I did not get a workout even in today. We were very busy. Um, so it's Gomber against Suarez. Okay. So that's the, uh, starters tonight. Um, I hopefully will get a workout in after, after, um, after hangout live. Um, yeah, I thought it was pretty shitty this morning and it was okay this afternoon after I, got off the air, but, um, and I ride as many days as I possibly can, but it was pretty lousy this morning. And, and my guy, good to see you. One of the reasons, where is it? One of the reasons, um, and it's okay. And, and I'll, I'll get, I'll get my workout in. I, I promise you is that my guy and, and from journey spice company, organic pizza seasonings, uh, amongst a lot of other things. We had a, a cool little uh, call with Andon, my guy, and we're working on some stuff. So what's amazing about this whole thing is how organic it's been with people who are fans or people that watch, people that participate, and um, stuff that we're working on together. So... Um, that was going on earlier today and it was awesome spending time with you and Rosa and really looking forward to what we have coming up. So great to see you. Uh, and Huey is on the broadcast too. Jeff Houston's there too. So it's Huey, Spilly, Corey and Drew. Everybody's there. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, any word on Freeland? Um, I think he's okay. I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what they say about him. Uh, what did Patrick Saunders say? Hold on. I'll look at Twitter real quick. And yeah, I'm just going to call it Twitter. <clears throat> mm, let's see here. I mean, Bud Black said he was okay after the game. He said he was okay on uh, Sirius XM satellite radio. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, he said he's okay multiple times. I'm looking up Patrick Saunders here. Chris Bryant is out. Brendan Rogers is still out. Wow. So they got a little sickness going through the clubhouse. Um... I mean, I, I guess he's all right. I guess he's okay. I don't know. I'll tell you this. Um, I understand using Kyle Freeland as a runner. I I do. But uh, the only advantage for Kyle Freeland as a runner is for him to be aggressive. Not fast, but aggressive. You could have found another less important pitcher who maybe not be as fast, but is fast enough to score from second base on a base hit. What you get with Kyle Freeland is somebody who's going to be more aggressive. But the other side of that is you, you put in somebody who's going to be more aggressive. Don't be surprised when he's more aggressive. And being more aggressive probably is not what you needed. You just needed somebody faster than Diaz at second to score a go-ahead run. 
And I, I understand. Well, you know, let's see if Spilly brings this up. Let's see. Oh, nothing. So I don't know. So at the end of the day, it was absolutely a managing mistake. It was because you had other people who are pitchers who could run faster than Diaz, who wouldn't had to have been as aggressive at free as Freeland. And you didn't need to be that aggressive in that particular game and that particular situation. Don't forget, you weren't trailing in the game. The game was tied. So if it is a more critical game and you're behind and the run really does mean you need to be more aggressive, then fine. But that's not the case. Now oh, the Philly fanatic is goofing with Spilly right now. That's funny. <laughs> I'll take that. That's pretty funny. Uh, greetings from Vienna, Austria. Michael, greetings to you. I just rewatched Amadeus the other day. Great movie based um, in Vienna uh, where everybody speaks English. With an incredible five quarterbacks off the board between one and 11, do you think Sean Payton would pick the sixth best quarterback? Uh, probably not. But I don't think five are going to go that quickly. I think four are going to go in the top six, maybe even the top four. I don't think that's going to happen. Unless... Yeah, I don't think so. I I, I don't think that's going to happen. So, but you, you never know. And we're nine days away. Uh, Whitey Herzog passed away today. Great, great manager in person for the community. I did see that. 92 years of age, Whitey Herzog. Long time. Uh, all right, Daniel, here we go. Another unacceptable Bud Black loss last night. Daniel, well said. You're avoiding your same repetitive joke. And you're getting into more commentary that shows dissatisfaction with the manager. Perfect, Daniel. And when I look at the Rockies' last eight losses, to see that nine of them, or uh, or nine losses, to see that eight of them are by two runs or less, yeah, not good. Here is the starting lineup for tonight. We're going to go with Chuck. Yeah, Chuck is the DH, Tovar short, McMahon playing third, Diaz catching, Nolan Jones in left field, Montero at first base, Doyle in center field, Toglia in right field, and Trejo at second base. So no Brendan Rodgers, no Chris Bryant, and I don't know about Jake Cave. I, 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 I guess he's okay. And I don't know about Stallings either. I, I don't know. You you probably had other options besides Freeland. And I mean, it's just like, I get it. I mean, I understand it. It just was a bad move. But so many of the decisions that come along with close losses are results of bad moves. Managers do matter. Uh, Cortland Sutton wants a pay raise. Doesn't he have two years left on his contract? Oh, Judy got paid. You know, I'm not exactly sure what Cortland has left, but I can look it up. Give me a second. Mm -mm. And we're going to go. Uh, I don't want that. I just want contracts. Oh, how do I look this up? Uh, let's see here. Uh, wide receiver. 
Denver. Let's see. All right, Cortland Sutton. What do we got here with Court? Big contract total, $60 million. Okay, so he does have two years left. <clears throat> Charlie Blackman steps to the plate to lead things off. We are underway with a fastball down the middle that Chuck took for strike one. All right. So Cortland's base salary this year is thirteen million. His dead cap hit is nine point six. Chuck pops out to shortstop, one down. Uh, restructure two point six. So. Yeah, and he's got he's got another year next year. So I gotta be I gotta be smart on how I look at these things. But I mean this is this is he's he's got next year. He's um got a dead cap of three point eight next year, he's nine point six this year. I mean, you wanna trade him if you possibly can. Yeah. He got two million of his twenty twenty four salary fully guaranteed on uh, March eighteenth. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I think if they could trade him, they would. And it looks like he wants to get the hell out of Dodge. Uh, did you see the article I sent you on X today? Um, I don't know. Maybe I did. What was it about? Give me some details. I'll let you know. Not sure. Andon, thank you. Thank you, Andon. Are you kidding? I'm pumped. I'm excited for the future. No doubt about it. By the way, we got a ground out from the Rockies by Tovar, and that puts Ryan McMahon at the plate. Two outs, nobody on. If not, uh, long story short, it would be the Broncos training 12 and a couple of... Oh, oh, that. Oh, all right. Thank you. I did see that. That was a speculative trade by John Heath for BroncosWire.com, which is connected with US, USA Today. Um, I think that won't happen. And um, there you go. I saw it. I looked at it. I dismissed it almost immediately. Um, the one thing the Broncos can't afford to do is give away draft picks. Cannot do it. They've done it. They got burned by it. Um, they've gone, you know, dollar bargain bin for free agents. And they're trying to stock up on draft picks. So they're not about to just throw a ton of draft picks away for another guy who you're going to have to it'd be like Russell Wilson part two. Makes no sense. And, and most likely Dak Prescott will just simply hit free agency in the off season. And he'll probably be the number one free agent. So if you just want to spend a big gob of money in free agency next year, go for it. Uh, send the link for the spices and in sure. Uh, well, you could go to, to amazon.com. I know that and journey spice company. So you can just look it up, but sure. And you can promote that. We're getting together with this stuff. Do you think Bud Black is worried about his job? Yes, I actually do. I think he rightfully so should be. First worry about winning, then worry about the job. Oh, well, there you go. DMAC could inside the park homer off a bunt. <laughs> Another ground ball out. So the Rockies go in order. Gomber to the mound. Uh, no score with the Phillies and the Rocks through a half inning. Trade Freeland, fire a Bud Black. There you go. Uh, sadly, the Rockies likely won't have any critical games this year. <laughs> uh, well, you're probably right, but I'm still curious to follow the story about why what is happening is happening, one way or the other. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm down for it. Riptide, thank you for the tip. I love it. You can feel free to tip your sportster. 
Your muggle is putting out the virtual tip jar. Thank you, Rip Tie. Uh, Denver should do nothing. If he wants to hold out, fine. Don't trade him and don't pay him. He's financially spoiled. I do want him on the field, though. I I actually, well, I I agree with you if you cannot find a uh, trade value that makes sense. I I don't know why you would do a new re- new deal with Cortland Sutton. I, I definitely wouldn't do that. There's no way I would do that. Why would I do that? I wouldn't. And if he's upset because Jerry Judy got a boatload more cash than he's got from the Broncos, too bad. I mean, he is narrowing in. This year, he will have cashed in on $48 million of his $60 million deal. Uh, he has made a lot of money from the Broncos. So much money from the Broncos. Tons. So, yeah, his total deal... Uh, was $62 million. And with the money this year, he will have made $48 million with the Broncos. Uh, Okay, that's pretty good. And he's going to be 30 years old next year. I mean, I... seriously? Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think we're good there with paying Cortland Sutton. Amadeus is one of my favorites, best picture of 1984. Yeah, it's a really good movie. Holds up pretty good. If he hadn't been hurt, would Freeland have been on second for the 10th inning? If he hadn't been hurt, uh, no, he would not. Because the way they do it is whoever made like the last out is automatically the runner. Um, So could they have put him out there? I guess theoretically you could have used a pinch runner. You would have had to use a, he probably would have had to go play in the field because they, they didn't have any position players left. I don't think. Uh, That is in reference to Sutton. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I get it. Thank you. Why wouldn't Cortland want a nice pay raise? The Broncos raised ticket price after a non-playoff year. He wants his piece. Well, okay. I, I get it. I get what he wants. I absolutely get what he wants. I just, I I wouldn't go there. Don't care, R.J. Bush, Broncos first. Is it about injury concern? I'm killing DMAC with truth. Well, I appreciate that. Re- really bad start for the Rockies again. Well, they did go down in order. They do have one out. Um, pitching to uh, Turner. And he uh, rips one deep in the hole to Tovar. Tough throw. Ah, can't make the play. Ball gets past Montero, but not far enough to advance. So if a uh, better throw, tough, deep in the hole. Boy, they're going to give that hitter an error. Well, he would have been out if Montero could have made the play. So I'm listening to Drew. They've scored it an error. Yeah, they're trying to say it wasn't an ordinary play. Um, it was a fast runner, Trey Turner, Bryce Harper at the plate right now with the runner on first. Um, you know, he made the, he made the fielding play cleanly. An accurate throw would have got the runner out. Actually, it wasn't even that, it wasn't that hard of a play because it was a big one hop throw. I'm okay with that being an error. You're a major league baseball player at shortstop. I think making an accurate throw from deep in the hole 
if it, one hop is not the difference, it was one hop throw, but it pulled Montero off the base. I think Montero could have saved the day right there. Uh, and he didn't. Oof, nice sweeping curveball to strike out Harper. Wow. Beautiful pitch by Gomber to nail Harper right there. That was nice. Uh, let's see here. Good afternoon, DMAC. Go Lakers. Michael, yeah. We'll see if anybody wants to uh, lose on purpose so they don't have to face the Nuggets. It's pretty funny. It's a funny concept. Uh, I am, you know, I'm going to hear Rick Kane. I subscribed, Cardinals fan. Well, hopefully you're subscribing to my channel. I hope that's the case. Let me um, refresh here. Wow, I have 5,983 subscribers right now. I'm 17 subscribers away from 6,000. That would be pretty awesome just to clear that hurdle. You know, the more subscribers, the better. So I'll, I, I want as many subscribers as I can, but... Hitting a few landmarks along the way would be great. We started on this channel uh, with like 200 subscribers, which is kind of weird because I was just posting videos of my kids doing sports and stuff. But but cool. Thank you. 17 more would be great. Ed Prather, man of the year. Ed Prather is the man of the year. And Ed Prather is who I use to sell my home and to buy a new home. And you can find Ed at edprather.com. The rates come down, which maybe they'll happen in June. Nobody's going to do you better than Ed Prather. As he did for me, he can do for you. He will sell your home guaranteed. They are the number one most trusted real estate team in Colorado, and I can tell you exactly why. Ed is the best, as is Dom, Ashley, Abby, Andrea. The team that we had working together to get this done for us was remarkable. I just could not give a stronger endorsement than to support Ed Prather. And if you do like this channel and you're paying attention, and I thank you so much, even a note to edprather.com, thank you, um, is great. And, and, and my guy, come on now. We're getting there. We'll get there. Avid Caddy's been great. Um, Trek Bicycle Boulder is a strong partner for us too. So anybody who wants to partner up with us man we are we are open for business and we deeply appreciate it uh bud black is too nice everybody loves bud ain't no doubt about that i'm so happy the rockies broadcast added the batter to the little scoreboard in the corner uh i sent them the exact mock-up four years ago i'm not what are you talking about so added the batter to the little scoreboard in the corner. Oh, okay. I see what you're talking about. It was oh man, Rio Moto. Damn, is that a home run? Yep. Two run bomb. Boy, two two pitch. JT Real Moto fucking drilled it. Exit velocity of 101 miles per hour, 413 feet, left center, two nothing Phillies. Damn. Rocky's trail in another game. Whew, he got all of that one. Shit. Big hook. Kind of the same pitch that Gomber struck out Harper, but he left this one up, and he's pitching to a righty, not a lefty. And uh, hanging curveball, taken deep. Rick Kane, go cards. Next batter. Can of corn to Toglia and uh, Rockies go to the top of the second down to nothing. Go cards. All right. There you go. Going downtown to Coors Field for a ball game is awesome. And I would love to be able to see competitive baseball in Denver. Well, we are seeing competitive baseball right now, Wade. We are. I told you nine of the eight losses were by less than two runs. That's competitive baseball. Thanks for responding to our chats, DMAC. You're the best. Edward, of course. This is the whole concept of the hangout, just to hang out. I'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about here. And if there's something fun to watch long as we sit here, cool. 
I'll definitely be paying attention to two other games tonight. Um, Lakers and the Pelicans, absolutely. And then um, side eye on Kraken against Winnipeg. Let's see what time that game actually starts. I mean, I, I just, you know, it'd be great if Winnipeg could lose two in a row. But I'm not holding my breath. But sure, it's worth paying attention to tonight. That game starts at 6 o'clock. So, we'll pay attention to it. All right, in general, I got two Fubos going at the same time. I got Sports Center and the Rockies game. And I got you guys over here. Didn't Harper have a major meltdown at Coors last year? Uh, did he? Feels like it was. Philly's crowd is as light as Coors. You know, you get that in April. I bet I bet there's still 30,000 folks there. It's just a big stadium. Crowd said we're playing the Rockies. I'll stay home. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can't really judge fans or the crowd, accurate crowds in April. It's just uh way it goes. See you in the morning, DMAC. All right, Michael. See how your Lakers do tonight. Does Lakers lose tonight on purpose? Um, I, I saw that AD Anthony Davis was playing tonight. I, I don't think you can lose on purpose if you're playing your starters. It's, it's I don't think it's going to go like that. You'd have to sit guys in order for that to happen. Oh, Diaz crushes it. That's in the, well, it should be a single, right? Because he's slow, and he is. So didn't quite get to the wall. Nice leadoff single by uh, Elias Diaz. Uh, so with the error, is one run unearned or both? Always confusing. One run is unearned, I believe. I think. <clears throat> you know what? I can check. Uh, it's confusing for me, too. I, I, I'm I not great on um, pitching baseball stats. Nolan Jones at the plate. Runner on first, no outs. That run should score. You should be able to manufacture that run. Okay. This is about a team approach, not selfish at bats. Let's produce that run. <laughs> got a ground ball to first base. Got a, That's good. Well, no, that's actually not good. You just traded run. <laughs> Soft ground ball to first. They go to second for the force out. More or less, you just trade an out. You just trade you got a faster runner on but you got one out runner on first so that actually did nothing for you and you did not hit the ball hard so that actually uh that actually kind of sucked not a productive at bat that's where i'm going not a productive at bat uh let's see freeland gomber rather two runs uh Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm not sure about the uh, earned run thing there. Sorry. Don't know. Somebody maybe smarter than me can comment on that in the comments. Put that in the comments. Beautiful day there in Philadelphia. Uh, let's go here. My dad was born and raised in St. Louis. I was born in Missouri, but moved around a lot. Landed here 11 years ago. Ground balls of the pitcher. We're going for an easy 1-4-3 double play because Montero is not that quick. And so despite getting the leadoff runner on, this is the way that you lose games. You don't produce when you should. Two poorly hit balls. You didn't hit the ground ball the first hard. You didn't hit the tapper back to the pitcher hard. So you get a great bat by Diaz to, to get on base. He's slow. If he was fast, if that was Brenton Doyle that hit that ball, he'd be standing at second, but whatever. Uh, Michael, selling Sunset Colorado, the new spinoff with Ed Prey, the real estate, and uh, <laughs> D Macaroni. <laughs> Sounds good. 
Do you think the Avs play starters on Thursday if it's a meaningless game? No, I do not. I think they will rest. I think they should rest. There's no, I mean, you got to play some guys, but no, I, I would give, <clears throat> I'd call a bunch of guys up. I, whatever you can do, um, anybody that really is meaningful for you, I would not play on Thursday if Thursday doesn't mean anything. Very rare situation. I don't know what all the rules are in terms of call-ups, but I certainly would not play Rantanen. Uh, Rantanen, McKinnon, Taves, McCarr, Nachushkin. I'd probably play Middlestat just to get him going a little bit. Uh, Duran, I would not play. Anybody who's got anything lingering or nagging, I wouldn't play. No, I'd, I'd, I'd take some time off. Uh, okay. Looks like the box score says Gomer's given up two runs and has zero earned runs charged against him. Yeah, that I saw that too, RJ. That can't be right. Uh, oh, here they're talking about Freeland. Hold on a second. Hold on. All right, so uh, Drew's just, they they replayed Freeland sliding at home, uh, writhing in pain, and then just being okay. And that is a wild reaction for just being okay. Uh, I hope Michael Porter doesn't forget his shoes for the next game. Yeah, that's a weird story, wasn't it? So Porter Jr. only missed one game this whole year, and it's because he forgot his shoes. Okay. Now, I do understand he's got foot issues, so I'm going to guess if you do forget the shoes you're supposed to wear, it's not as easy that's going over to Dick's and just picking up a size of 13s or whatever Michael Porter Jr. wears. So my guess is that it's not that simple that if me and you forgot our shoes, we'd just go. Because it's, you know, if it was that easy, it'd be easy. But it was just a weird story. Like, how actually does that happen? Which is odd, to say the least. Are the Broncos taking Brock or what? We need a Kelsey Kittle, close, Gronk type of tight end. Meanwhile, um, first first batter grounded out to Tovard short, and I think that Stott gets a base hit to left. So runner on first, nobody out. Phillies are up 2-0 on the Rockies. Um... Are the Bronx taking um, Brock or what? I won't be shocked if it happens, but and this is any any this is not anything against Brock Bowers, but I'll just be disappointed. Period. If it's not a quarterback, but I I won't be shocked if that happens. Uh, hey, Dmac, do we expect Landy to play in the postseason or hold off till opening night? It's a good question, Daniel. A few weeks ago, Jared Bednar said that there is a timeline of return for Gabriel Landeskog, and it was during the playoffs. That being said, um, with one game left on the schedule, he's not practicing all out with the team. He's skating occasionally, and he's, he's just being a good teammate um, on the bench during practice and in the locker room during meetings. So it, I, I just don't think there's time. However, that being said, if the Avalanche got to the Western Conference Final, I mean, I could see a scenario where perhaps Gabe does does return. But I don't know, man. I, I guess I'd be surprised by that. It would help if we had a Mahomes, Brady, or Purdue. Okay. Bedsy said today that Landy is not close. All right. Okay, well. There you go. Uh, Landy is doing C cuts, learn to skate type of work. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> Listen, let's just hope Landy can come back, period. So uh, uh, to think that he would come back at this point for the playoffs now. Uh, but again, if they make it to the Western Conference Final or the Stanley Cup Final, I, I don't want to say, you know, you, maybe. But don't forget, man, that these playoffs, if you go that far, they go forever. It goes a long time. Not Purdue Purdy. RJ, I knew what you meant. Gomer got another strikeout, which the ball was way off the plate. It was not a strike. Wow, a bunt? With two outs, a two-out bunt. Gomber with the bare hand. What a play by Gomber. Damn, son. Now that was impressive. Gomber comes off the mound, grabs the ball barehanded, wheels, helps that he's a lefty in that situation, and fires to first to get the runner. Damn. Well, that was a good play. Rockies have good plays. They got good players. They're major leaguers. Pick Bowers and be happy. <laughs> well, I'm not going to be happy if you don't have a quarterback there, Creaky Five. Who's your quarterback, brother? Who's your guy? Stidham? Okay. So in one of the deepest quarterback classes that we can recall, um, in memory, where there doesn't seem to be a big difference between the quarterbacks. However, in terms of NFL quality and ability, they seem to be more than qualified. You would just pass on all of them. Stidham for the year. And, and then what? And now what? Start over again? Ninth year in a row, they missed the playoffs? Eighth year in a row with a losing record. And, and what? We're just in the same exact place again. Talking about these quarterbacks again. Going through their college tape and the all that. Again? Again. You want to do this all again. It's nice to be reconnected to Denver through your podcast. Oh, that's awesome. Returning to the 50th high school reunion at Denver East. In September 13th, I bought a new letter jacket for the event. That's awesome. Go Angels. RJ, I uh, agree. Steal one right off the road. Narratives change quickly. We're talking about Gomber's play. Woo! Wow. Uh, that was a hell of a play by Gomber. Uh, it brings up, uh, who is this? Oh, Doyle. Doyle comes up. Um, top of the third. Rocks are down 2 nothing. Daddy hack. Pop up to right. Out. Can the Broncos get... Uh, not just one, but two quarterbacks in this draft. They can, and they should. And I would take Bo Nix, and then I would take Milton in the sixth round, something like that, if he's there. But I'm I'm up for taking a quarterback in later rounds year after year after year. If it doesn't work out, then fine, whatever, you move on. Toglia hitting a, a mighty 143 on the season. Did hit a home run yesterday. Switch hitter out of UCLA. So he's going righty. You don't see him hit righty very often, but uh, with Suarez on the mounds, who's a lefty, we see um, Tolia with a uh, right-handed at bat. Let's see how it goes. It's down 0-1. Big hook for strike two. It's caught the bottom of the plate. 0-2, young man, what are you going to do? What is your 0-2 approach? Let's see what Suarez does. I would assume fastball. Nope. Another big sweeping curveball for strike three. Took a hack at it. 
So I just threw him two curveballs in a row, and that was that. He didn't leave it up. He put it down. Really great location. That's nice pitching. You got to take a hack at that. You don't really have much of a choice. That's where you just tip your cap to the um, tip your cap to the pitcher. That was just great pitching. <clears throat> Ground ball to short on the first pitch, and uh, Trejo is out, and that's that. So the Rockies did get a runner on, but because of a double play, they did go nine up, nine down. And they do have one hit, no runs through three, and baseball moves quick. <laughs> baseball, if it's well played, you're throwing strikes, the pitch clock, it works. It's better. It's more consumable. It's a better game. Uh, unless they are the 12 pick, don't reach for these quarterbacks. Okay. All right. I've heard that for years. Uh, take Bo at 12 and get to work. Fine with that. Uh, Lakers are less intimidating than Pelicans. Pelicans can't believe I'm saying this. Let's go Lakers. I don't know. And, and I mean, you, oh man, it's still LeBron. It's Anthony Davis. It's McCollum. I mean, I don't know. Another pitiful inning for the final game. Okay. Now Daniel's back with the same jokes. Daniel's jokes, my guy Daniel, his jokes are making, saying that this is the last game or making some like, how do you feel about so-and-so's last game? Or it's, But it's not true and it's the same joke. So I, I do like your contributions, Daniel. I do like hearing from you. But like, it's the same joke. What's not the same is Ed Prather. Ed Prather Real Estate at edprather.com. That's um, a totally different deal. Love Ed Prather and his team. The number one trusted real estate team in Colorado. Check them out at edprather.com. We'll be um, doing Hangout Live, I think, from Coors Field on Friday. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm... Um, I'm looking forward to it. Got some T's to cross, I's to dot. Kyle Schwarber up the plate. He just looks, Schwarber is just so powerful looking. He's he's just one of these guys. Harper's another one that just, and I don't know what it is about lefties more than righties, but it just always looks like he's about to hit the shit out of the ball. Well, I remember Schwarber as being kind of a little hefty, too. He looks in great shape. He looks like he got his act together a little bit. Oh, huge hack. High fast. This is lefty on lefty, so maybe Gomber does have an advantage here. The Gomber got Bryce Harper out with a big swinging curveball. So let's see if he um, goes to the same thing for Schwarber. Nope. Fastball outside. Three and two. Okay. Lefty on lefty. Three, two count. Got some high heat past him. Goes with the same pitch. So he tried. 92 was his fastball. He just tried to go straight heat to get past Schwarber and he fouled it off. Let's see if he goes back with the same pitch or he tries to break it off. Same pitch. Uh, that might have been a little bit of a slider. That fooled Schwarber. He got the strikeout. Good job. All right, let's see here. Spilly was in a hot dog eating contest. He wasn't really trying. He's just... <laughs> Spilly just like ate one hot dog. All right, well, I mean, Gomber's pitching good. He made he made a mistake to Real Muto, obviously. Other than that, he's doing well. Trey Turner hits a sharp grounder to Tovar. Easy play, two down. Games go fast, man. Major League Baseball goes fast these days. 
Uh, bring on the Lakers, reigning champs of the IST tournament. I like the IST. Call me crazy. I'm an IST fan. If the Nuggets get another chip, it'll be through LeBron, KD, Luka, Tatum. Wow. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be hard. All right. Bryce Harper's one of my favorite players. Struck out his first at bat. Again, his next shot at Gomber. Takes ball one. Lefty on lefty. 2 0 count to Bryce Harper. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm going to guess he's not going to pitch him anything juicy. He'll go with some breaking stuff here and just try to fool him. Can't leave it up, though. Yep, there it is. Big hook. Nice pitch. I mean, I might just keep going to that. Two and one. Throw a fastball to Harper. Who knows? Yeah, he, he did, but he threw it high. Three one. Um, yeah, just just chase him off. If you walk him, you walk him at this point. Throw a hook off the plate. Nope, fastball. Wow, what a spot. That was a pitch. Three and one fastball on the outside, low outside, right on the black. Damn. Hey, Gomber's got some impressive stuff, man. 3-2 to Harper. Heat, high heat, fouled off. Man, Gomber ain't scared. He doesn't throw all that hard, though. I mean, his fastballs are only 90, 91, 92. So he's not, he's not throwing as hard as most uh, major league starters. Big hook. It's a nice hook, man. Lefty on lefty. Harper did good to foul that off. It's a fun at bat right here, man. I love this at bat by both guys. Cool at bat. That's why I love baseball. Stuff like this just rules. Drilled it, left it up. Oh, got lucky. Man, he left that pitch up. 82, juicy, low in the zone. Harper just misses it. Puts a good swing on it. Fly ball to center. Rockies out of the inning. See? It's matchups. It's the how the count changes, everything else that happens. It's the matchup, what, what happened in your last bat, this at bat. I get into it, man. I get into it. I love all the nuances. And baseball is just filled with nuance. It's almost all nuances. Gomber was the big catch in the Arenado trade. Yep, sure was. That is correct. All right. Um, we got through three innings. Appreciate it. I'm going to uh, sign off here for now. I'm hopefully going to get a workout in. I have not worked out yet today, but I had my fizzy water. I thank Ed Prather at edprather.com. The Rockies are down 2 nothing. See how my workout goes. If it's close in the eighth inning, maybe I can sign back on and do a little bottom of the eighth watch along. Maybe combo that meal up with um, Lakers Pelicans. It gets going here in just a little bit. And we're going to watch the um, crack and take on um, the Jets. See how that goes. So plenty to watch tonight. I appreciate you. If not, if this game gets out of hand, no reason to come back. 7 a.m. tomorrow, about last night, and then 9 a.m. with Nate and Chad. Um, noon to 3 with Tyler and Scott every day on Altitude. And uh, right back at it for Hangout Live.